sing them. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Job, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. I'm just going to let you read it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Acts and a letter to the Romans. First and second Corinthians. Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus and Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd and 3rd John, Jude and Revelation. What's the definition of true success? Don't sound so sad about that. What's the definition of true success? What's the definition of true failure? What's God's ideal for marriage? And when we grow up, we're going to marry a? Okay. Stay seated right there. Evening. Hello, how are you tonight? That's good, I'm glad to hear it. Let's start our little, our little song service off. I want you all to stand up, and we're going to sing Lord's Army. Thanks, Dad, for teaching me all these. Okay, let's do this. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. Okay, you can sit back down now. Thank you for participating. That was fun. Okay, let's go. This little light of mine. So you can do that sitting down. Right. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine all the time, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no. I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no. I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine all the time, let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine. Okay, let me think. I had a third one, but I can't. Let me think real quick. We'll sing... Number 
1014 in the books if you want to get one. If everybody knows it as Jesus Loves Me. So, and then we'll be led in our opening prayer. For whoever has the opening prayer. Thousand fourteen, if you want to go along with the books. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Three. Jesus, take this heart of mine. Take it pure and holy thine. On the cross you die for me. I will try to live for thee. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Let us pray. To God, any Father, we're just thankful for the wonderful day you've given us and pray that we're able to give you praise and glorify and, ed- and edify and things you've said and done. Thank you for a good study at the jail and those who added to the Lord's church. Be with those that they continue to look to God's word for guidance and, and make them a, a better citizen and a better Christian. And be with the church here. We continue to reach out and teach your word to those we have in contact with that this word will grow and change lives. Christ, we pray. Amen. The next one. How many of you know Seek You First? We'll sing Seek You First, and then we'll be uh, we'll have our our lesson. If you want to mark your books at number nine hundred and nine for the le- for after the lesson, it's Jonah's favorite song when he is a child. So. I thought if we're going child-wise, we're going to uh, do it that way. So, seek ye first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Singing Alleluia, Alleluia. That's all we're going to do this time. All right. Thank you so much, Jared. Good job leading singing there. Okay, what I'm going to do here, um, we're going to, we're losing here. I'm going to have you... You four, would, would, and what's your name? Let's say it again. Bunka, thank you for being here tonight. Would you mind sitting next to her? And then I would like for you three to sit next 
right there because we want to clear this open here because I don't want to scare you. There we go. We'll get everybody together here. And Jack, you're welcome to come back up up here. I think he was really afraid I was going to scare him. I'm Either that or he figured my breath was really bad tonight. Very good. Well, welcome tonight. We're glad you're here, and it's a privilege to be able to come together and to worship, singing these songs, and, and then focusing. I'm going to try to not make this go too long, and I'm going to try to leave all of our young people where they're not totally afraid of mean dogs and wolves. Anybody here afraid of a mean dog and wolves besides myself? How many of you have all ever been bitten by a dog? You know, most dogs are really good. They're, they're, they're really nice and they're, they're wonderful to be around. They make wonderful pets. But every once in a while you run across these dogs that, that just didn't get the message from somebody that they needed to be nice. You have new doggies? Well, that's good. Are they good doggies? They're new doggies, so are they nice doggies? Yeah. Well, if you would, take your Bibles and turn to Psalms 100, verses 1 through 5, and we're going to be looking at that uh, psalm tonight for the basis for our study, because we're going to be talking about Thanksgiving. This is the time of year people have a lot on their mind about Thanksgiving. Anybody here preparing for, for company on Thursday at your house? Several? Are you preparing food for that company? Probably. I think Ron's cooking turkeys. That's not been mentioned today, is it, is it Ron? Probably got all you want to cook. But there's going to be a lot of cooking going on, and, and probably somebody is hoping that they don't burn their turkey and set their house on fire and all sorts of things like that. So anyway, there's going to be a lot to be thankful for if we sit down to the table in most homes, particularly our as Christians' homes, and if not, maybe we're going out to eat and there'll be things there to be thankful for, or maybe we'll just be thankful for that sandwich that we have, and if it's even if it's peanut butter, right? But the idea that we want to look at is this. Psalms 100, starting in verse 1, we read the words, Make a joyful shout to the Lord. Boy, some of these young people have been already accomplishing that without any problem. And the shout to the Lord, all you lands, the psalmist says. So it's the idea there's going to be a cry to the Lord. Well, that means that there's going to be something significant that there is a need to proclaim. And what is this? Serve the Lord with gladness. You know, if you're joyful, you need to have gladness in your life. And that doesn't mean everything is good. As we talked about, we live in different circumstances. Sometimes things are better than other times. We struggle with circumstances, but we still can live with joy and, and shout with gladness and, and come before his presence, he says, with his singing, which is what we've been doing. In other words, it's time to praise God in our lives. And that it follows with in verse 3, Know the Lord, he is God, it is he who made us, and not we ourselves, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. If you know anything about sheep, is they need a lot of care. You have to take care of them. And so they are accompanied by shepherds. Most of us are aware of the shepherds who take care of sheep because they need a lot of care. There are sheep being raised out towards uh, the south here by the Amish folks, and you'll see sheep out there, and they're out there. You've got the little kids working, working the, the flocks of sheep and and so forth. It's kind of interesting to watch. But I want to zero in on verse 4. Look at verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Now, Kyle, at your house, do you have a fence and gates? And if you have cattle, you fence in cattle sometimes to keep them in a certain place. Sheep need to be cared for in a sense that they are often put into pens and they have gates for their protection. And we, we think about that. We've got these young people that are hearing me talk about gates and they may not think about that too much, but I think tonight they will before we're done. Now, how many of y'all say this is a real friendly looking dog? Now... 
You notice this dog isn't barking. And I've learned something in my short life, long life, however you want to look at it. I've learned there's some dogs when they're really silent, it's better to leave them alone. But this dog doesn't look too happy. Now, how many of y'all have a dog that looks like this one? I'm glad I don't. And it might be the friendliest dog in the world, we don't know, but it sure doesn't look like it. And there's a problem that I see with this dog right here, and I want you to think about it. Let's suppose that we're the ones facing this dog, and we're about this far from that dog. And there, what's between us and that dog? Nothing. That's a pretty scary place to be. You can walk along, all of a sudden you see this dog staring you in front of you. And then sometimes you encounter them, they look like this. Now, young people, I don't want to give you a nightmare tonight because there are a lot of friendly dogs. But what I want you to see, there is a need that we have for gates. Because as you look at this dog and us, if we were standing in a field and this dog was running after us or we're up close in front of this guy so that we could be a dentist, Veterinarians, do they have, do dentists work? Where's Scott at? Yeah, they do. Well, you can see the teeth in this one real easy. But if I've seen the teeth and I'm out there with this dog, I'm going to find out how fast he can run as he chases me. But point being is that that's pretty scary. And by the way, I want to tell you tonight that I'm using uh, artificial intelligence. Google created these images of dogs for me this week. And they'll do that now. I've added that to the slide creation that I use in Google Slides. And so these were AI dogs. And so I said, put in mean dog, and this is what they came up with. And they got that right. But I said, also, I need a gate. Because, you see, gates are important when it comes to dogs that look like these dogs. And what's really neat, if you've got a gate that's big enough, then that dog could probably hop over that guy, gate, no taller than it is. But if you've got really a tall gate or a good sound gate that's going to keep that dog with the fence out, you know what you can do? You can make fun of that dog as long as you want to because what's not going to happen? You're not going to get out because of the gate. The gate's going to keep you uh, protected. Now, I don't recommend, somebody said, that's mean. It's right. It's mean to tease a dog like that, isn't it? So I don't recommend that. And besides that, we don't know always how high those dogs will jump. I think this dog could get over that gate. So I'm not going to tempt that dog. But I feel somewhat more secure, right, if I have a mean dog behind a fence. And occasionally you'll run across that. Or if you go to some place like the animal parks, the zoo, where do they put the lions? In a cage behind gates. What are those gates for? Well, they can let the animals out if they want to, but they can also keep those animals in. They're pr protecting you because of the gates. Now, what do we have when we look at this verse? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts of praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. This is telling us that there's something good behind gates. And I can tell you that not only behind the gates that we're talking about here that we have God's protection, but we have something good. How many of you have ever visited a castle? Maybe in England. Been over to England, visited the castle. Y'all have been in Scotland and England, Ireland. Beautiful castles. Kathy and I made a trip out to Leeds Castles in England, and it was beautiful. And they had a moat, and they had the gates, and, and then uh, entering the castle was quite amazing. Because who usually lives in those castles? Kings live in castles, and they live like kings and queens. This right here is actually a kings and queens castle. This is Windsor Castle. Maybe somebody's had a chance to visit that. They've recently, I don't, it wasn't open when we were there, but I think recently they have now made it a tourist attraction after the the queen's death, but you can, you can go into this castle. But you notice something about the gate? As you look at this slide, you see there's a metal gate down there that you go down to, and then I guess you get admittance after you're checked out. You can go down and cross in and go into the entry and, and tour the castle in the areas where they have that ability. But 
whenever you think about these castles and the time period when they were built, not everybody got to go in the castle. And if you did, you were visiting a place where you would be blessed by your entry behind the gate. So if you were privileged to have an invitation to go visit in the queen uh, or the king or queen there, you were, would be privileged by that visit. What do we mean? Notice what we have in Psalms 100 verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Going back even to Bible times when you entered into the presence of the kings in their castles, their, their, their abodes, you would have courts, long, narrow, or long, big hallways like this one, and notice what the color of the carpet is. It's red. So you might enter a garden court, but then you would enter into a court that would, would be part of the building. Here we have the red carpet. So they would have the red carpet for the visitors to, to walk down. And if you're invited, you continue to walk on the red carpet into rooms that look like this. What do you notice about this room here? What color is it? Gold, and uh, this is part of Windsor Castle, and it's overlaid in gold, and it's a beautiful room, as you can see, and the furniture's overlaid in gold. In other words, it's a place fit for a king. And so when we see the words that David, or the psalmist, writes here, enter to his gates with thanksgiving, we're privileged. When we're asked to enter into the courts, when we see in, into the courts with praise, there's something there that's worthy of praise. And notice it says to be thankful and bless his name because you see those courts and the hallways and those rooms lead to other rooms that host a banquet. Now, how many of you are going to decorate your table Thursday that looks like this one? Kathy, you're, I know you're looking at it, so you, you're probably going to have seat Clayton to a table like this. <laughs> no? Yeah, it wouldn't fit in your house. I mean, that's the problem with most people. We don't have a place to put something like Can you imagine dining in a place like that? Yeah, it's something to be thankful for. It's, I'm not going to get the invitation, I know, but, but it is kind of amazing to think about. But what's it talking about? It's talking about what God blesses his children with and how you and I respond in thanksgiving. Well, as you go into to that room, you see how beautiful it is, but you still get to the point that you're going to eat. And look at this beautiful turkey on this table. Look what Joel says in verse 26. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. How many of y'all had plenty to eat today? Nathan, did you eat your fill today? What did you have for lunch? Um, pizza. pizza. Did you eat all you wanted? No. Plenty of it? What about for you, yes. Seb? Yes. Did you have pizza too? Yeah. wonder what Jack ate. Oh, uh, pizza. Uh, yeah. McDonald's. McDonald's, did you get plenty of it? No. Okay, good. Olivia, what did you have for lunch? You had McDonald's as well. Good. What'd you eat? Steak and mashed potatoes. They rolled out the red carpet at your house, didn't they? Well, very good. Which was good. So look at what we read here. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. There's a lot of folks that have read Joel too and never really pondered that a lot. But... This is truly how God has dealt with his people. Wondrously. When you look at all that went in from the very beginning of the creation, through the fall of man, through God's patience and working with mankind to bring about a Messiah, you can surely agree that, that God has dwelt with us wondrously. And... Even more so when you consider what verse 3 of Psalms 100 says. Know that the Lord, He is God. And look at this. He who has made us. 
We're a creation of God. And one of the things we want to get across to these young people tonight, and as we think about youth focus, and we've done that before, is the idea we did not make ourselves. How many of y'all have made somebody that looks just like you? No, we don't make ourselves, do we? You and I are not a product of human engineering. What would we look like if we were a product of human engineering? Well, I, I use this illustration here. This, this looks like something out of a superhero movie or some uh, other type of movie. But what that is, I put into Google, it asks you to put in what you want to describe for the image it want, you want Google to create for you. So I put in there, creating man from the dust of the earth. And I got some really weird, now if I had time I'd show you all the weird pictures I got, but this one was kind of interesting. Four reasons than one. How would y'all like to look like this person right up here? You see, this is what man does. You see a problem with this guy right here? As they say in good old Ozark, he ain't all there. Number one, I couldn't get Google to make a complete person. It just kept popping up images that were the, like the head and so forth. Also, it wasn't a very good rendition of the man with skin and so forth. So what is this telling us? Google don't make a good person. God does. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. Therefore, we are to be people who give thanks to God for the, being our creator. And look at all the wondrous works that God has made. I mean, you look at the trees and the wildlife and the birds. And we were talking yesterday about Canadian geese. Don't y'all... Canadian geese are wonderful. When they put those things out for man to hunt... Somebody forgot to figure out that those creatures domesticate too easy. And so they made the rule that they were to fly off and then you could hunt them like you do deer and so forth. But you know what? Those deer, or those Canadian geese didn't want to fly. They wanted to walk up to people and get fed food. And as you think about that, why talk about Canadian geese? Well, they are wondrously made just like you are. Would y'all hold up your hand like this? Can you do that? I'm not going to scare you or bite you like a dog or anything. Just kind of wave like that. Seth, how many muscles are involved in waving the hand? More than three, a bunch. And if we add this right here, now look how smooth that goes. But if you were a, a robot made by man, would it ever be that smooth? They actually, to mimic in a robot, that, to make the movement as smooth as they can, they actually mimic the movement of a hand. They digitize the hand movements and then translate that to computer programs. And it's not easy to do. And still, they don't do it well. Why? Because they don't have the ability to do what God does. He wondrously makes us as long as we can take the time just to think about it, it's obvious, including all of his creation. Now, let's go back to the, the gates. What do you all see behind the gate here? Sheep. Here you have a sheep fold, and you've got a gate with sheep behind it, and Google got this one right under there making this picture. Here it puts the sheep behind the gate, and you have the green lush fields and the fences that protect the sheep. And notice that it says, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. If you are the sheep, who's going to take care of you? Shepherd. shepherd. Who's our shepherd? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. When God takes care of us, we're in pretty good shape, right? We have the right kind of protection. And that's significant. Because as sheep, we need God's care of Psalm 23, verse 2, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Why don't you put sheep next to a flowing river? Why not, Kyle? 
they'll get off in the, the, the rapid water, they'll get in water that's too deep for them, they'll end up having big problems. And what happens when you get a sheep wet? Do they shrink? <laughs> Scott, what happens when sheep get wet? They get cold. And they, they, they don't get heavy. With, they don't really like a sponge, do they? The, the, the lan, lanolin keeps the, the sheep fur from actually absorbing a lot of the water. But, but it, it, it does affect their body temperature from what I understand. That's right. There's probably some other things there that I didn't and read and I don't remember. But the point is, the still water is easy for a sheep to drink. They're not going to drown. And so it's something that's very essential. They have green fields. What are they going to do with the green fields? They're going to eat. They're going to have the water. And so in verse 3, the psalmist David says, He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. A good shepherd will lead us in the right direction. How many of you can depend upon a friend of yours at school or you play with to lead you in the right path? What happens if I go, hey, Jack, come over here, I want to show you something. Jack's thinking, what, what's, what's Rick up to now? If I'm a friend of yours, you might think, where are they going to lead me? I'd do that to my little brothers oftentimes. I'd say, come on, come on, follow me. I'll show you something. And I'd take him in a situation that wouldn't necessarily be the most pleasurable. We'll not go into that. I've repented of that a long time ago. But the point being is that we can trust God that he's leading us in the right direction. For example, what's he given us in this book? The right direction. God will not fail in leading you in the right pathway if you look. And why that's important is because we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. On this picture right here, I know it's kind of small on the screen. It's a sheepfold, and it's a place of protection for the sheep. There's a little bigger picture. Why we need that picture is because of what we're warned about in Acts 20, verse 29, savage wolves. Well, I mentioned this morning we'd be talking about mean dogs and wolves. How many of you have seen a wolf in captivity? They got sharp teeth? Yes. Coyotes, very similar. They have the sharp teeth. Olivia? Yeah, they do. They actually have, to, they have help. And they actually, she mentioned a decrease in deer population. That they will do. How many of you have all had a chance to see a wolf close up? They are wonderfully made. I wish I had time to go into a wolf and what makes them up, but I can assure you, and as you well know, that they are a savage creature. They're vicious, especially if they go in the hunt and they're hungry. And as he says here, not sparing the flock. So what's necessary for those sheep in order to be protected from the wolves? Well, you need the sheep fold, place of protection that goes a long way, and then you need the shepherd to watch over the flock. Now, Young people, what's wrong with this picture? Adults, what's wrong with this picture? Or these pictures? Google also made these, by the way. I put wolves and sheep, and this is what they came up with. Somebody said something back here. They're not going to be friends, are they? They're not going to be together like this. Yes, you will not see. Is the wolves and the sheep, you're... Buddy, buddy, that's not going to be. This is what you'll see. What do you see here? Yeah, Ezekiel 22, 27 says, Are like wolves tearing the prey to shed blood to destroy. That's exactly what these wolves are doing. And this one over here on the right, they got this right. And there's it's something significant about this. This is called a sheep pile. Now, uh, this sheep, the sheep are in a pile. And what's on top of them? A wolf. Now, what's a sheep pile? Well, there's an interesting news story. Wolves in this news story are blamed for the death of 143 lambs and sheep near Shaw Mountain. And this is in, uh, I believe, Idaho. 143 sheep were killed, according to the sheep herder, because 
of two wolves chasing them and forced them to flee, and they ran into a steep gully, and there they were piled up together and were crushed and suffocating, suffocated each other. Now, that's called a sheep pile, but not just any, it's a sheep pile up. I mean, if you look back at this wolf, that's kind of a, he's piling it on on top of them, but those, those lambs are in need of protection. Therefore, where do you go for protection? Where do we go for protection? If I'm being chased by a wolf or even one of those dogs that we looked at earlier, where can I go for protection? Home. Home. It's a good point. Good point. Climb on a tree. But what if there's a big old fence and a gate you can run through and shut? Yeah, or jump over it. I'm going through that gate. And when you're running scared, you might be able to jump over about any gate that you have. But what's behind that gate when you get there and shut it and the wolf's on the other side? What's behind it? You have protection. So if I see it over there by Jack, and i got a wolf over here chasing me, and I can make that gate and shut it, I know behind that gate is protection. And that's what I want you to remember tonight, because God is our protector. And who's our enemy? Satan. He wants to destroy us. We're warned about wolves. And also by lions. Therefore, we need to be in the place where there's protection. And who is the provider of protection? Very good. John 10, verse 11. Beautiful words. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd does what? lays down his life for the sheep. I know that if I have Jesus as my protector, that he gave his life for me. And because he did, I have that element of protection if I'm willing to do what he wants me to do and follow him. And that's important because if you don't follow the shepherd, do you have the protection? No. That's why tonight we're going to offer the invitation if you're not following the shepherd and you know you need to make some changes in your life because you're out there on your own. There's wolves and mean dogs. Mean bears. Yeah, that's right. So tonight, are you in the protection of God? Is he your gate? Think about it. If you stand and sing, would you come? There's a fountain free for you and me. Let us hate to his spring. Tis a fountain of love from the source above. And he bids us.
that night in the institution of this feast, after the bread was the fruit of the vine, this representing the blood that the Lord was shed, and we know that life is in the blood, and he gave a total commitment. May we also be totally committed to his cause. And may those that partake of this now, remember it represents his blood in the New Testament. Shall we pray? <coughs> Father, thank you for again for your son to sacrifice and for this Father that represents his giving all so that we might have life. In Jesus' name, amen. Concludes the Lord's Supper. Did overlook anybody? Are there those wishing to give a contribution? Let us pray. Father, we thank you that we've been blessed above all the earth, that we find ourselves in this place and this time. Father, may we use the things that you've given into our hands so that we might be about your business and that those around us, Father, might see the light and come to it. Bless us now as we give. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we go our separate ways, I've just got a few announcements. Um, my wife reminded me I'm in trouble that I didn't announce anything about Ron smoking turkeys. So Ron's going to be smoking turkeys tomorrow. So I wanted to make sure to say that. I, want, I don't want to live in the doghouse. Although it's pretty comfortable. I've made it to be very accommodating. Song leaders, please remember to get your song list to Rick a day before services. Um, I was also given an announcement here. Um, Bev gave me the announcement that uh, there will be a Thanks a Bunch brunch next Sunday for any of the volunteers who have delivered meals on wheels. Um, if you've done that, the uh, bunch, um, Thanks a Bunch brunch will be next Sunday at 12 to 2 p.m. I assume that's here at the building. Yeah. At the Senior, Citer Senior Citizen Center. That'll be at uh, 12 to 2 next Sunday. Uh, in terms of those that are um, ill, um, we I don't have any updates except for Kay. Um, she fell Friday, um, was in a lot of pain, and had a bad night last night. And the good news is she didn't break anything. The bad news is it just feels like she did, and hopefully they got her some medicine to ease her up, and she'll heal up from there, and uh, we'll keep her in our prayers. If there's nothing else, please uh, do get any other announcements to me, and I'll announce it at a later date. I want to thank everyone for being here tonight.
always glad to see a lot of people on Sunday nights. If you want to stand for the song after the, uh, uh, for the invita- uh, for the closing song, we'll be led in our prayer after the song. Our song will be number 705. Number 705. A Common Love. for another beautiful day of life. We're thankful, Father, that we can gather here with like-minded individuals and worship you, study from your word, and fellowship with one another. Father, we ask that you guide us and direct us in our lives. Help us to take time to study your word daily and meditate upon it. We ask, Father, that you help us to grow more like Jesus each and every day. Father, when we fall short and we fail you, we ask that you soften our hearts and help us to be repentant, that we can be rightfully restored to you. Father, we thank you for each and every one of these young folks here today. We ask, Father, that you help us all to be good examples to them. We ask, Father, that they grow in your and mature in your word every day, Father. Please help them to be good examples to their friends, to their teachers, to their coaches, and to all around them, Father. We know times get difficult, and they have a lot of peer pressure on them sometimes, Father. And We just ask that you give them the courage and the strength to make the right decisions and choices. Father, we ask that you add more young families to our congregation and help us to grow, Father, both numerically and spiritually. Father, we thank you so much for the awesome news that Nacho received this week of being cancer-free. and Just so very thankful for that, Father. And we ask, Father, that you continue to be with those who are going through treatments, who are suffering and sick on a daily basis, and who have upcoming appointments or procedures, Father. We just ask that you watch over each and every one of them. And Father, we ask that you... Help us to be thankful not only during this holiday season, but each and every day. And we thank you most of all, Father, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Father, we love you. ask that you watch over us and guide us and keep us. Please forgive us of our sins and shortcomings and help us to be forgiven of others. pray all things in Jesus' most precious name. Amen.